first, currently I'm at a crossroad. And my main question is, I'm not sure I know what I want. So then don't make a decision. Let life give you more data till you're sure. And don't try to force it. Now your request is want more clarity. Want more clarity about what I want. Your inner being knows what you want because all of the pieces are in your vortex. You know what that is, your vibrational reality where you've been putting all these desires. Your inner being knows what you want. So if you don't know, then you're not as tuned to your inner being as you might like to be. So here's a clue. What you want feels really, really good when you think about it. What you want is really exciting and fresh and free feeling. It's uplifting. It's that feeling of eagerness. Yes. So I have characteristics of what that looks like. Um, I think what I've been kind of been confused. Well, it's not one thing. It's a whole stream of stuff that feels like that. Your premise is a little flawed. It's like, I don't know exactly what I want. And we say, oh, if you could look into that vortex, you'd see so many things that you want, like fun and clarity and rendezvous with people and birthings of new ideas and new thoughts that you've never thought before and figuring stuff out and feeling at one. There's so much that you want. There's not just one thing that you want. So when you say you're at a crossroads, what is this definitive crossroads that you think you're at? Specifically, it's related to career and I have the opportunity to have a clean slate right now. And that's where I am. Well, you and do every single moment of every single day. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but what, what I mean is that in terms of the vehicle that I've used in the past yeah. um, to get, you know, what I want in life, whether it's advancement, whether So you it's... use the term vehicle. So if you gave up your vehicle, would you enjoy just walking around places? Yes. I think that's what I'm trying to grasp right really? now. Really? I, I realized... How do you usually get around? How did you get over here? Oh, my wonderful friend drove me here. So in a vehicle? In a vehicle. I could have walked, but it would have taken a lot longer. Yeah, it's cumbersome, <laughs> inefficient. So when you say you have an opportunity to cut loose from your vehicle. Yes. Is there another vehicle? Can you just get out of one vehicle and into another? Absolutely. Then it's all right to get out. If there's another vehicle that is as meaningful, feels as good, then there's nothing wrong with getting out of one vehicle and getting into another. So you're not as much as a crossroads as you thought you were. You're just evolving. So what hesitancy do you have? It's clear to us why you're wanting to get out of one vehicle. It's not as clear to us from you why you want to get into the other one. Can you tell us what's in the other vehicle that you're looking forward to? So recently I thought about, okay, what is the feeling and the characteristics that I want for whatever the next career would provide. Yeah, well, we know that you get what we've been talking about. We yeah. talk in all so, those vague generalities all of the time. But what so we want from... the specifics that I want, um, that, that I'm The specifics for, that you think are in the other vehicle. Yes, is... So a few criteria that I had in my mind that I would, I would love... Wait, wait, wait. Not that you love, that you know for sure are there. Because you don't want to get out of this vehicle unless there's a vehicle there that you are pretty sure is going to satisfy you in some ways. Otherwise, you stand in this insecure crossroads. You see, if you were approaching this the way we are always encouraging you to approach this, you would say, I'm getting out of a vehicle and I'm getting in another. And I know that the other one is not only equal and as good as the one I'm getting out of, but it's so much more. We wouldn't be having this conversation. You are the one that called it a crossroads. You are the one that introduced your vibrational attitude of some insecurity. So in this conversation, we're just wanting to help you discover, is there any real insecurity? Or were your first words that you gave to us, did they really not mean anything? Were they just words? Do people just use words like crossroads when what they really mean is just getting into a faster car. Yeah. Is it a crossroads or are you just getting into a faster car? Which is it? It's to get into a faster car that Doesn't that, that feel different? Wonderful. That's an entirely different conversation. You sort of tricked us all. <laughs> We're playing with you. Now, you don't have to know the specifics of where this faster car will lead you. Just the fact that you know it's a faster car, it's really reliable, absolutely dependable, it feels good in all of these ways. Then there's no wondering, no crossroads. What are you doing? Getting out of this car? What then? Getting into that one? Why? Like that one better? Why? Oh, so many reasons I can't even begin to tell you. It's potential. That car has more potential. 
That car will go zero to 60 in two seconds. This car never goes 60. Yeah. Well. <laughs> and part of it is, so when I look at what I wrote, so meaning it has to, I would like it to be something that either uplifts humanity. Is that different? That's different though. When you say it is, that's different than I would like it to be. If you're still in the, I would like it to be stage, don't get out of the car. Okay. You so, following this? Yeah. Why leave a vehicle where the momentum is good into something that to you still feels like unknown? Now, we're not saying that you have to get lots of facts and figures. You just want to be in a different emotional, therefore vibrational place before you make the jump. If you could know what your inner being knows about that vehicle, we wouldn't be having this conversation and you'd just be going. But in your wanting to think it all through, hear this, you're going to like this, you are introducing the push-pull into the conversation. Can you sort of hear that? Yeah. Let's go back to where we started today. Do you believe that through life you've launched rockets of desire about what you want more? Absolutely. And yeah. do you believe that your inner being knows about those? Yes. And do you believe that there's a clear path to get to all of that? Yes. And do you believe that when you feel exhilaration, that means you're on that path? Yes. And do you believe that when you are trying to talk yourself into going, you're not on that path. You're not up to speed with your inner being. You want to step back and be more general and say things like, I wouldn't feel this much readiness if there were not readiness for me. And the eagerness that I've been feeling about this is a clear enough indicator to me that as I make this move, that it will serve me in so many positive ways. This is exactly what this conversation is all about. This statement is going to help you the most. Picture just for the sake of the silly analogy that we conjured together. It's not perfect, no analogies ever are, but it will serve you just the same. You're in a vehicle and it's fine, but that one looks better. So you just step out and step in and you really like it. And then after a little while, you just step out and step into another one and you really like it. And then after a little while, you just step out and step in. So picture a never ending lineup of newer and improved -er vehicles <laughs> lining up for you to take you to the next wonderful thing that your life has shown you that you want. And what trips you up, this is the reason we know this is so good. When you said, I'm at a cross, cross, cross point, crossways, cross, we can't even find the right word, it's so, ugh. <laughs> what you really meant was, what you were saying is, I've got to find the perfect thing that will serve me forever and ever. So I don't want to make any mistakes by getting out and getting in. And we say, get out and get in. It's New York. Just get in the cab and then get out and, and get in another one and then get out and then just get in another one and get out and 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 have fun every time, funny for time, every time, every time, every time, every time, every time, because every time there'll be more that will settle in that will give you satisfaction. And every time there will be more that you will desire that will lead you further. Thank you. Yeah. And that's always been, when I look back at how things have been showing up in my, um, in my yeah. life, and it's been wonderful. Yeah. And yet, still, it always turns out good, yeah. and yet you all still worry. Ah, I'm at a crossroads. Ah. Oh, stop making a big deal out of it. Everybody's at a crossroads, and you're at a crossroads all the time. And you're not at a new crossroads, you're just at another crossroads. So I think, I think part of uh, the pull and push lately has been, you know, when I think about, okay, what brings, um, what gives me the highest excitement right now, has been lately more like, not, I, I, I can't read enough or, uh, you know, get enough sleep or, like, that brings me a lot of joy right now. And, of course, like that part of me where it's like, but you, you got you to, gotta, you know, get going. Let's go. Let's go. Feel that in but, a little more. Tell us with a little more detail what you mean. I recognize that I was pushing too hard. Like, I wanted it so bad of finding out what this thing is, the vehicle, the next vehicle. We want to clean that up a little bit for yeah. you. What you just said is, I, from my human standpoint, was trying to figure out where, when, who, how. When my inner being had already figured it out. So all I needed to vibe out is, does this feel like fresh air or stale air? Does this feel like fun or struggle? Does this feel like ease or effort? Does this feel like flowing or stagnation? Does this feel like clarity or confusion? We are really appreciating this conversation because so many people are approaching life this way. 
Most of you think that you have to have all the details figured out before you're ready to begin moving in a direction. But what you're really saying is, I don't yet accept that my inner being has all the details worked out or even more, even if my inner being does have the details worked out, I'm not sure I can hear them. So maybe I better stay where it's more secure rather than just going where it might feel better. Jerry used to take Esther every summer. They would go up to Montana. He liked the Bitterroot River. He liked to fly fish. And there were sections of the river where there were lots of rocks. The streams were not very wide, but there were lots of rocks. And if they got there at the right time of the year before the snow melt was too high, then lots of rocks were showing their way. And Jerry would take his rod in one hand and his creel in the other, and he would just run down the river or run up the river. And there was always a rock there for him to step on. And Esther used to watch him from the boat and wonder, how in the world does he dare just run knowing that there will always be a rock? But there was always a rock for him. Sometimes he had to leave a little further. Sometimes he had to leap further than Esther thought was humanly possible, but he would do it. Never did he fall in the water. He just always knew that there would be something there for him. It was an astonishing thing for her to witness. And we've used that analogy with her, with all of you, because we want you to realize that when you get in tune with who you really are, you'll have that exhilarating feeling of wanting to leap to the next and the next and the next with no sense of insecurity, because your trust in some part of you's knowledge in other words, you wouldn't even feel like running and leaping if there weren't something there that is solid for you. And so that's the part that we really want you to get to first. We want you to get to the trust stage, that it's right for things to work out for you and that it's right that things always are working out for you and that it's right that your inner being knows what they are and you don't have to prove anything to anyone. And we know for sure that the reason so many of you don't relax into the trust of letting your inner being just call you forward is because you're still at that, wait a minute, I need to prove my worthiness through struggle and hardship. I need to make it harder in order to justify the good that I hope comes. And we want to say to you that in the moment that you stop feeling that need to justify the good that comes to you, and you step more into the attitude of trusting that your inner being has taken your information and is now calling you toward a path that will not just take you to this whatever goal it is you're looking for, but will show you a never-ending, really fun path. A never-ending, really fun path. A never-ending, really fun path. Not a path leading to a destination. Ta-da! A path leading to a destination, ta-da, and another, ta-da, 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 just another, and another, 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 just another, and another, and another, and another, another life-giving, heart-opening, mind-clearing, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, knowing, you see. We want you to be in love with yourself and in love with your life and in love with your inner being and in love with the unknown because it's not unknown by your inner being. It's only unknown by you. Do you ever go somewhere? Esther loves this. She has friends who are really good. They move around the world really well. They get cars easily. They get Ubers easily. They can find the best restaurants easily. It's really good just to follow them where they go. Don't you really like knowing that you have an inner being who knows where all the good stuff is? And do you feel uncomfortable in just letting your impulse call you toward that fun stuff? You've got to get over this business of trying to prove yourself because nobody's keeping any score. That's the thing that's going to really tickle your funny bone <laughs> the most. When you re-emerge into non-physical, you'll say, okay, who's got the list? What list? The list of all the good things I did. What do you mean? The list of all the things I sacrificed so that I could be a good person. Oh, we don't keep score like that. What? <laughs> what? All those things I didn't do that I wanted to do, I don't get any credit whatsoever for them? Not here. Your credit was in the moment. How did it feel? It sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's your credit. Happens in the moment. If it feels good, that's your credit. If it feels bad, that's your credit. There's nobody saving anything up for a reward later. It's all happening in this moment. You can feel your alignment with source or not. Thank you.